And now, it's time for the last level of the normal game, I guess. In Seasides. So let's go to the summit. Definitely a very difficult seaside. The first room is not too crazy, but it still takes precision to get through. Have to do a lot of uh, dash wall jumps to get all the way to the top there with all of our dashes. Especially right there. I, run out, I, I ran out of dashes there quite a lot, but we're going to need to be able to dash off of that and then dash after we've jumped over the wall as well, so we can't just jump and dash like that. And the last room of this level is the one that took longer than any other room, I guess. Except maybe one in the Farewell, possibly. But anyway, not quite reaching the top there. Uh, what I found was grabbing onto that ledge there and then falling back down to the crystal and then going back up again made it easier to make the jump work. So I, I did that pretty much every time from this point on, but now we need to do side uh, dash wall jumps up and then up and up and up. Basically just repeating the same thing over again, but if we make any mistakes we can't do it, so... There's also a, an updraft here helping us slightly. Which is easy to forget that it's there. We can also cling onto that first surface there to make sure we can get an extra dash. We can't do it further up, however, so we just need to be careful when we go back down. Like, even if we get that crystal back again, we still can't do it accurately. But we can use it to get back to the other crystal so we can do that instead. Not that I think I ever did that. Or maybe there was once. I don't think there was, though. Come on. There we go. Dash, and then dash to the end. So there we go. It's the first room down. The second room isn't too terribly difficult either. The first two rooms didn't take me anywhere near as long as the third room. The first two rooms together don't even make half of the third room. So, uh, but basically we just need to bounce off the springs, bounce off the second, well, the third spring on the falling block, again to hit the activator and get to the platform. And then that's basically all of that room. Didn't take long at all. The third room, however, is very long and quite precise with falling around the spikes and bouncing over them and dashing. All sorts of things. All the springs there. It's, it's, it, it took quite a long time. The third room took an hour by itself. The first rooms took 20 minutes, so if that doesn't say something, I don't know what will. We also have that cloud there that we need to not bounce at full speed off to get to that spring up there, because otherwise we'll bounce too high into the spikes. Then we need to dash wall jump off that small block there, managing to make it over to that cloud over there, which we, again, we don't want to bounce off at full speed. We want to dash through the small hole there and then bounce off the spring, going into the maze of death that will take us a while to get to several times. Then we just need to dash through a lot carefully to make it over to the end. So let's get started. And that end might look familiar. Just a little bit. And you'll see why once we actually make it to the end. But anyway, let's bounce off of all this. That, again, just like in previous levels, you get quite used to the first parts of the challenge. But the later parts of the challenge you'll have a lot more trouble with because you don't get there as often. Just because it's very easy to die in places you've already gone through. Doing pretty well in this run, though. She's gonna die right there, though, unfortunately. But it happens, considering how precise we need to be. Determination is key to the seasides and farewell. Even if, if you're struggling, you, you can take a break, try again later, just need to keep trying, and you can do anything. There we go. I think I... No, I didn't. Making it through a little bit more. Don't bounce over the cloud too much. Good, good. Making good progress and dash into the spikes. Well, that's a shame. But I will avoid doing that in the future. Obviously. 
Okay. Okay. Good. Here we are again, making sure I get the right dash in there, as well as dash wall jumping and get through there. Okay, and that's the first time getting into there. That took a, a little bit of time, but it took me 25 minutes to get back to that point on this run. So it's been 25 minutes since the previous attempt, basically. And I, I wanted to keep track of how long it took me to get back to that point, basically, from this point on. It didn't take me anywhere near as long with any other attempt. But I struggle a lot after getting to that point, so... And I don't know why. I, I hit the spikes just before that spring quite a few times. One minute later. So not, not too much time, obviously. Getting those muscle memories in there. Just learning all of them. Gonna have this muscle memory for the rest of my life, probably. Probably not perfectly, but it's gonna be there. Okay, no, dash into the spikes. Seven minutes later. Time is flying by. Probably over halfway now. Okay. Okay, go, go, don't. Ooh, that's a bit close. No, <sighs> tried to dash, and I was a bit too close to the wall. Five minutes later, one minute later. It's just so disappointing to die early on in that section as well. Another minute. Not quite. Five minutes again. This is where I started cutting out a lot more. Three minutes. Probably the next attempt on the ones that don't have numbers on the screen. Three minutes again. Ooh, getting better? Not quite. Wrong angle. Control stick issues. Another minute. I think we're getting close to the actual run now. Two minutes later. I think. Oh, we're getting close. Ah, oh, that died at the very end, but I think this is the run, so let's go. Just watch the beauty. That took an hour to do. There's nothing more satisfying than getting a perfect Celeste, like, once you actually finally get the run in a Celeste level. And there we go, that platform block at the end falls down, but we're okay. We've made it. And this place should look familiar to us. It's hard to believe it's over, isn't it? Funny how we get attached to the struggle. Promise me that you'll take care of yourself, okay? Thanks for the advice, Granny. This is probably one of the biggest moments you could probably have in Celeste. Just because you've made it to the summit on the seaside. Just thinking about that is crazy. Anyway, I don't know how it was only 413 deaths considering it took me an hour and 20 minutes to get through the whole level. So I had to post the screenshot to Twitter. But now, it's not quite over yet, because now it's time for the core. One of the most dreaded things you could probably do. First off all, we have to have pretty much probably all of the crystal hearts. 
to get in. Normal, it has the normal core part of the mountain rules where you can't use your dashes forever. Uh, but anyway, the first room is quite nice to us because it's teaching us to use the the wave dash, the soft wave dash, rather than the hard wave dash. The soft wave dash is just having platforms to land on that have have enough time for you to actually just dash and or wave dash without jumping first. So, but anyway, but that is the first room down. So now we have the second room. Which is preparing us for what is to come. It's not... I mean, it's, it's quite a difficult thing to do. But it's still nothing compared to what is to come. Just need to fling ourselves around... ...carefully. Uh, and at the end of the bumper area here... ...is a nice wall that we have to switch off before we can get out. As well. I love the way that the course switches between... ...the objects in it doing certain things because the bumpers don't even they, they just hurt you if you hit them normally and now for the third room which has pretty much every object in it with like the platforms that fling you the platforms every flat platform basically falls as well and we're going to be switching between fire and ice because we have lava and ice in the ceiling and uh, floor to kill us we have the bouncers we have the clouds we have the more platforms that sh shoot us around. We've got the the block that moves. We also have springs. We also have the blocks that we can dash through. We have spikes. We have spike things, crystals to keep us alive. It's all over the place. The block that flings us. And then we get to ice. We have the block bombs that will fall slowly. And then at the very end, we have to do the wave dashing again. So hopefully you got good at that in the first room because you need it to be able to get through. Also, I started editing this differently at some point to where I was only cutting, like, doing the bits that we haven't completed yet, so. I think it's when we get to the block bit, so. But anyway, we need to be quick and careful because there's, we're timed, basically, by having the lava and ice on the top and bottom. And we have to be careful with our stamina because we only have it for a bit, a bit and we can only recover our dashes from the crystals. Okay, nope, that's not going to work. Especially if the cloud just launches us into the ice. Obviously this took, I think, probably less time than the the summit seaside, so... It was still quite difficult and took probably 15 minutes. But it was... I, I got there without too much hassle at least, so... Okay. Now those platforms there falling down is interesting because we probably want to make sure that those don't fall down when we're going across there so we're probably going to actually want to wall jump because if you wall jump without gripping it won't fall down so as we're probably going to see in one of these runs I think from this point on we're also going to not show the beginning of the run until we get the, the run that finishes that off go 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 not a lot of time there, but we can wall jump here to save a little bit of time with the lava and ice. We also need to not get crushed by that block there on the top part, but I mean, I thought, that, I mean, that's fairly normal, so. Considering it has to launch us, so we have to be on the bit where it's going to be better to launch us. It took me a few tries to get through the spring bit. But it's also good that the springs also give us back our stamina so we can cling onto walls for longer. I'd actually say that this isn't as bad as you think it is. It's a long room, but you get used to it, I guess. In fact, I'd actually say that for the rest of the game, which is weird to think. I guess it's a weird hindsight in Celeste. Where it, it seems difficult, but it's actually a lot easier than it looks. It just, it just takes practice. Okay, almost at the end. Nope, got hit by the spikes. That, that block to fling yourself there is a bit tricky because you have to be on the right spot on the block. Otherwise it'll fling you in the wrong direction. Nine minutes later. 
random time jump. I guess there's been a lot of time jumps though. But I guess that one took longer than the rest of the attempts. Which means either my brain reset and was trying to relearn everything, just a little bit less than normal, or I was really struggling. Seven minutes later again. That wave dash at the end only took me a few tries to actually get it right, but after four minutes, after all that, I finally got the run. The soft wave dash is quite a lot more forgiving than the hard wave dash. Hard wave dash, you get your dash back more than the soft wave dash, I guess. But there's a lot more chance of messing it up. The other thing about the Celeste levels is they can be very exhausting, even if they are difficult or not. They just drain all the energy somehow. Okay, here we go. Right at the end. And there we go. It felt so good to get to this, this far in, that I just had to take a second. Wow, you did it! Variants are now accessible from the file select menu. We'll be going over this at a later time. Not that much later though. Considering we've only got farewell left. And oh boy, because we only left it off, not even halfway. 210 deaths on that level, by the way. And now, Let's resume farewell, where we left off. Not quite halfway yet. Determination, here we go. That's what, that's exactly what you need for it, so. Well, so I don't actually remember there being a, a, what's it called, a heart door in here somewhere. But I might just be remembering it wrong, so. But let's go. Except I need to wave dash properly. I did some of this fairly well. Other parts of it took me a little bit longer, but that some of them also took me a little bit longer because I had to f actually figure out what I was doing. Not that. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. Okay, let's go around. Not like that. Again. Don't dash into the spikes. That's not what you're supposed to do. Uh, dashing down there resets the timer on the spikes coming back into where you are though. Which is good. Okay, let's go around. And we need to dash wall jump to the other side, keeping our dash so we can actually use it again. Like that. And then I was confused what to do at the end there, because the way out is up. And I just did not know what to do. Ah, uh, but the what- eventually I figured out, because I can't make that jump and dash by like that. Eventually I worked out that I can actually use the momentum of the middle blocks to actually make it a little bit higher. And then I can use my dash from there on, so. This should be the run through this room. Okay, dash to get the back, and then there we go. And now this room, I don't think it took too long to get through, but we have this one platform which we can only stand on top of once, and it's got springs on the other side, and yeah, just all the things. Just need to bounce our way up, somehow making it through. And then at the very top, we have an extra double dash. We need to make it all the way up to the top right. So let's go. Also, because of playing Celeste in the hardest levels, I actually got this, um, like, um, wrist brace thing. And that's the main reason I got it, not for Super Mario RPG stuff that I haven't done yet. Just because I was having trouble in, on the Yoshi's Island, or Yoshi Racing thing. 
Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit further on this. I, I was trying to bounce up so I could get onto that platform up there so I could get a better start on that. Oh, that's not great. I used up the platform, which I think I'm not supposed to use there. I think I'm supposed to use the top of the platform when I go past the double crystal. So if I can... No, maybe not. Oh, no, there's actually several double crystals there. Oh, that's not good. Don't bounce off of that. Also, I love the, the patterns in the walls with the... Everything. Like all the glitching out. I almost made it there, just needed to bounce with the spring and I might have been able to make it. Okay, let's go up. Good, 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 good. Bounce, bounce, and up we go. Okay, this room is interesting because we have these red bubbles here. And it's uh, fairly long, I guess? I don't know, it just does not... Doesn't feel that long. Uh, but anyway, also there's a su the submarine there crashed in the spikes. But you can see that there's wind here, which doesn't affect us necessarily. It actually affects the red bubbles, so they all go up slightly than they're supposed to. So when I go into the bubble here, it goes up a lot faster than I thought it would because I thought it was going to go up towards that gap more. But no, because it goes up faster, it goes into the spikes. And as you can see, when I go sideways, it pushes me up a little bit. Which is how I'm supposed to actually get to that bubble up there. It's a little bit weird, but it's pretty cool at the same time. It changes up quite a lot for such a small change. It's really cool. Uh, but anyway, I also had a bit of trouble getting through that spike spot there. We need to also dash... or what's it called? We need to... I should remember what it's called by this point. We need to wave dash at, off of that platform at the end there so we can make it to the end. I think this is probably the run considering it didn't cut back to a later point in the level. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. I still don't think... Oh, well, we might be halfway now. Possibly. There's still qu quite a lot more to go though, so... We need to hit that switch there somehow and then also hit... We also need to dash into that platform so we can actually get to the, the double crystal as well, like that. Oh, almost. But that's the, the right idea, so. Let's go. That was close. We made it through. Okay, this room is was quite difficult to get through. Uh, but we have to use that those platforms that launch us to get into the middle there. And it's got those walls that we can't we can only touch once, which makes it a little bit more tricky. I decided to try to skip over it if I could, just until I, after I got the the activator and the double crystal. Not at first, obviously, as you can see. But once I got it, I it, it worked out a lot better. So just need to jump over that, grab the crystal. Not grabbing the wall there, because otherwise we don't have a dash to get over to that block there, which I almost made that anyway. So. Let's go. Like that. That's what I wanted to do. Then around. And around again. And then there we go. That's the end of that room. I wanted to be safe. So I went to the top platform there to be able to get over the top. I probably didn't need to, but I wanted to be safe. This room was quite difficult though. Because have, of course you have to time your fall. And I'm not great at timing, so. I have to dodge all the stars stuff. I mean, just... I don't know what they really call it. They're stars, so... I need to make it all the way through. I guess I'm getting confused because there's like, there's a lot of sea creatures here, which will make you think that, like, maybe they're starfish, but they're... I mean, you could... You could argue that they're starfish, but it, yeah, I don't... It feels... I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's fall down. We have a, a, a choice of which way we can go to fall down, I believe. Uh, but I'm going to go through the middle one because I think that's probably going to be easier than the other one. Just a little bit, but it might be faster to go through the other one. Maybe it is easier to go down the other way. I don't know, but anyway, we can use this uh, red bubble here to get to the end. Okay, now we have Space Wind again. Which maybe that does affect the play and I just didn't realize it. But then we have that block there that's going to fall down and we need to hit both of those activators with the getting the double crystal so we can get to the block over there and activate it and get out of here. 
going to be difficult to dodge around the spikes, though. And it's going to be difficult to actually do anything if I break the block down there before anything else happens, so... Anyway, it does seem like the space wind actually does affect us. Oh, I'm just crazy. Okay, that wasn't a great wave dash there because I didn't actually get my wave dash back. There we go, that's better. I almost got to the second one, I'm trying to go around through that small gap there to try and get the second switch. Ah, but I really need to have my dash again after getting both of the switches so I can actually do everything as well. So let's do that, perfect. Grab that, and whoa, that was not where I thought I was going to go, but it, it worked, so... Okay, now... I have to do a lot of dashing into things and try to stay in the air. So let's hit that. Let's hit the spring. We need to take out all three of those walls so we can get through. So let's try and do that. Luckily there's a crystal there to help us get through. And then feather. That one's a little bit tricky to get the feather to work properly. Because you have to get the right angle. And then you have to get to the next feather, so... I did a little spin there because it timed it out just right. Didn't dash at the right time though. Uh, but anyway, let's go through. Just like this. Very nice. Spin around so we can hit the wall at the right time. And then in we go. Same thing again basically with the wall. And the feather, and we made it through. Now this room... I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about it, basically. We have all these platforms that we can bounce off of, but the ones higher up that are spinning around, once we break them, they don't respawn. And so if we break them all and we can't get up to the top, we're in trouble. But we also have to hit all the activators along the way as well. So it's quite... it's quite diff difficult, so... It took me quite a bit of time to get through. I also had to decide which order to hit all the switches in, which was interesting. Uh-oh, I'm running out of platforms there. <laughs> oh, poor young me, not knowing what I'm doing. That's fine, though, because I died, so I get to have to reset anyway. Oh, but we're wasting a lot of platforms there. You need to be careful, because once we get all the activators, we also have to get to the top platforms that are going to fall down from hitting all the activators. Oh, please, young, young me, what are you doing? And of course I died after hitting all the activators as well. Oh, and I ran out of platforms before getting to the top. No, and it's all over. I'm just gonna shoot myself into the wall to reset. Okay, and of course I make it to the platform and then I immediately fall off. That's embarrassing. And of course I just killed myself to reset because I'm not gonna get back up there after that point. But anyway, I grabbed that one first apparently because I found it was easier. Then going around everything else. Okay. And I probably want to grab the top one before the other two because it'll make it a lot easier. And not have to worry about stuff as much later on. And then we get to the top. 